what's going on guys CPC here so today um, I don't really have time I work today and I have to work early tomorrow um, it's already in the late afternoon so I didn't really have time to go out and to film a video um, an actual fishing video but this will be fishing related so Today what I've decided to do is just kind of go through, give a breakdown of the gear that I use, um, how I have my setups, and why I use that gear. And then I also want to go through some of my tackle and just go through and show some of that. And so I'll go through each um, rod and reel. Um, I'll talk about the line that I've got on it and then i will talk about what application i use that for so to start that off um, i have <coughs> my smaller it's just an ugly stick it's a four foot eight um, ultra light action with um i think this is like 12 probably not even that maybe eight pound test on it and that's my real light rig it's got a little uh, Shakespeare 2500 on there um, and I use this for like bluegill and for some trout and stuff real light weight if I want a good fight or something um, I'll use that and it's a ultra light so I get a lot of action out of the tip and it's just really fun to fight small fish on and makes it feel like you're fighting something a little bit bigger. Um, so I'll use that especially when I'm going out and just playing with the kids and stuff like that and I want to catch something. Okay so that's my first setup. Um, my second setup is a Daiwa Juniper it's a seven foot six heavy and it's a collapsible rod and so with that you can see that it's telescoping not collapsible whatever you want to call it and so it'll telescope out to the full seven six and I've got on that I've got a quantum burner it's a five bearing um, I can't remember exactly what the ratio it's a 7 to 1 ratio and so I've got that with some 65 pound braid and I use that for um, frogs and topwater um, so one cool thing that I like to do once I get all these set up is I will go and underneath the reel I will take a small piece of tape um, just like painters tape and I will um, put that down and I'll write on that so I use this flipping pitching um, punching and frogs and so that's what I write on there and that's more for when you're first getting used to this system. Um, I'll show you my little book I have. I get Bassmaster magazines. And so there was an article once in there that talked about six setups that you utilize um, to be able to cover all of your basics of fishing. And that's what I've been working towards. I mean, I don't have a ton of money to go out and to spend to get all six of these. My rods and reels are old and used and um, my brother does a lot of tournament fishing and stuff so this old one is one of his old ones that he just gave me. Um, and so my gear is not all top of the line stuff so I use what I've got and try to accomplish and get as close to that six system that I can in order to complete. Um, my all-around fishing so that way I have the basics of what I need um, and to be able to switch over and 
a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, why do you need more than one rod and reel? I've got a Zepco 33 and I go fishing and I catch fish. Well, yes, you can go out and you can throw just your, your basic combo from Walmart and catch fish, that's no doubt. But when it comes to sensitivity, when it comes to finesse, when it comes to certain actions and stuff like that, it does make a difference in your presentation. If you want to be um, successful and be able to use baits in an appropriate manner, then you want to make sure that you have each and every one of those setups covered. Um, the type of line you use, whether it's braided, whether it's monofilament, um, or whether it's fluorocarbon, that is all important. Um, you want to be able to have that fluoro carbon sinks and then monofilament floats. So that's a big difference. And then the size and the thickness of your line matters too because you want to be able to be using the correct thing where the fish can't see it. You know, if you go too thick, yeah, you've got less breakoffs. But then if you're just throwing a small jerk bait or something like that, you don't want to have super, super thick line because then you're not going to be able to have as many hookups because fish will swim up to the bait. They'll see that line and they'll turn around and they'll be gone. So, um, so that's my second setup. Uh, like I said, I use that for flipping, pitching, frogs, stuff like that. Um, my next one is another just ugly stick this is a medium action um, six foot six rod uh, I think the recommended was six foot nine but this was pretty close so I, I went ahead with just a six foot six because that's what I already had eventually I would like to change it yes but I've got um, 14 pound um, uh, fluorocarbon on this um, this is a Shimano uh, Sonoran 2500 FA um, I got this was my first reel that I got growing up this rod um, I think I got them together if I'm not mistaken this was the first one that I purchased on my own that you know my dad didn't get for me growing up and what I use this for um, is I use this for like all my um, finesse worms and stuff like that and I'll just get out there and I'll, I'll throw a lot of worms um, weightless and so when I'm talking about that that's that's what I'm using and so um, I'll use a couple top waters for this um, shaky heads um, drop shot I use this as a drop shot it's not ideal necessarily for drop shot because it's not as long as you would want a full drop shot but again I don't have a 20 rod 30 rod arsenal like some uh, people who fish a lot of big tournaments and stuff and that's one thing I want to get into I want to be able to fish tournaments I want to be able to get to that point but I'm just not there yet um, and so I make do with what I have and so this works pretty well for a lot of those slower moving um, type baits. Uh, I don't use them for real fast uh, baits and stuff like that. I did use to throw a jerk bait on this, but since then I have got another rod that covers that. Um, okay, so my fourth one here, this is a Johnny Morris carbon light. It's a 7.1 to 1. Um, and then I have this on a Mojo bo uh, Bass St. Crow rod. And that's a 7 foot medium heavy. Now, I have this set up right now. This is a cranking rod that I use. Um, and I, I uh, used to have another rod and reel combo set up specifically for cranking which this is now that but instead of a 7.1 to 1 gear ratio it was a lot slower it was a 5.4 to 1 gear ratio and I loved that rod and reel but it 
disappeared. I don't know what happened. Uh, the last time I remember, I was out camping and fishing, and I think it got left on a shoreline. I went back and I looked, and I just could not find it. And I'm not even sure if that's where it really went or not. But anyways, so I had another rod that I used this for like jigs and stuff like that, but my rod tip broke. And so that's why I have that 7.1 to 1 instead of the 5.4. But I had this cranking rod and that's one of my favorite things to do is throw a crankbait. Um, so I had that cranking rod just sitting there without a reel on it after my uh, jig rod broke, which I think was a 7 foot 6 medium heavy um, that I would use for jigs. Um, after it broke, I took that 7.1 rod and I put it on this um, this rod for um, crankbaits and um, spinners and stuff like that which I've got another setup that I specified towards spinner even on on the rod here it says uh, that it's a, for spinner baits it's a St. Crow spinner bait rod but again I use it for crank um, and it works pretty good. The the sensitivity is, you know, it's it's kind of a harder sensitivity. It's not too soft of a tip, um, and so that's really good because when you are cranking through rocks and stuff like that, you can feel the vibration and the resistance of the of the bait. And so when you get a hit on it, you can you can feel that. Um, and you get a really good uh, hook set with that. So um, that's the setup I have now. I would like to change it and revert back to the rod and reel that I did have that slower um, gear ratio. Like I said, a 5.4 would be ideal. 7.1 is a little bit faster than what I want, but you work with what you got, like I said. So these two are my newest rod and reel combos. Now, this is the one that I have set up for my spinner baits. This is a Black Max um, reel. So it's one of the lower end cheaper ones. Um, some of my rod and reels. Alexis, can you be quiet, please? I'm trying to make a video. I need you to be quiet. Okay, so this is my um, spinning rod and reel. Um, I, I use it for um, mostly just for spinner baits is the only thing I throw on this one. Um, this is a just a Black Max, which is a very good reel, but it's also on your lower end as far as cost goes, so I actually like it. It's a Abu Garcia um, Black Max, and it's just a five bearing. Like I said, 6.4 to one gear ratio. I've got that um, loaded up with monofilament. Um, I think 12, 12 or 14 pound. I can't remember but um, I throw spinner baits on this and that's pretty much it. Um, the, the rod is a Shakespeare Agility, seven foot, medium heavy. Um, allows me to pull stuff through a lot of weeds and moss and stuff. This reel is actually pretty smooth for the cost. I really like the Black Max. Um, and so, yeah, uh, my last one that I have this is my top water and so this has um, monofilament again for the floating factor this is a um, loose speed reel or something like that uh, speed spool is what it's called um, and this is a 7.1 to 1 gear ratio and I've got that on just a speed stick I American Hero. I've never even heard of them, but it was it's it's made by Luz, so it's a Lou combo rod and reel. Um, this was my first Luz that I've ever used, and I actually 
like it. Um, I use it for top water. Um, the the reel on it is a 7.1 to 1. Um, I've got it with mono because um, it floats, so that's always good. And um, I throw jerk baits, crank baits, or I'm sorry, jerk baits, poppers, stuff like that, top water, ones that are reactionary, that aren't constant um, dragging in, you just kind of pop it. And so it's got a little bit of a stiffer um, rod. It's a six foot 10 medium heavy um, with a fast tip. And so that allows me to do those real short jerks that bring in that bait pretty quickly. Um, again, not the most expensive setup, but I really like it so far. It's been good. I've had it for about a year. Um, it's you've been able to not have any issues with it and it's 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 been good as far as cost goes um, I don't know durability wise I haven't had it long enough to, to see how far that's gonna go so there are a few more um, setups that I would like to have um, but for the most part I've got my bases covered with the heavy like I said, I can throw my frogs on it. I can throw bigger swim baits, and just with that braided line, I've got that real short one for my bluegill and stuff. Um, I do need to try to get another uh, jigging rod. Um, then I'll throw this the carbon light reel back on. Then I'll get a 5.4 reel in order to convert back into cranking because that's more ideal. Um, and yeah, so so that's about it for the combos that I use um, I I'll work. so something else I wanted to include um, but I forgot to mention is when I first really decided I wanted to get into to fishing and really dive into it because I've fished all my life but I really really want to understand how bass fishing works and how the species of bass um, how how they work i mean really something with the brain the size of a walnut you'd be surprised how elusive it can be and how smart they can be and so um i used to be a subscriber to bassmaster magazine and in the magazine it has different articles and stuff of different times of the year and structure and stuff like that and so what i compiled was just a um, three ring binder which I need to redo because mine got wet and it screwed up a lot of my pages but when I was first starting this book kind of acted as a bible to me and and um, really helped me learn a lot and so I just labeled um, it's just a one subject 70 sheet um, book and you'll see when I open this first page how it's messed up but what this used to be was um, had a bunch of different types of baits chatter baits spinning blade baits shaky heads whatever and then there were different colors there was gray uh blue and um green and it used to have a different thing telling you what pound test so there's a number for 17 pound test 20 pound 25 and it had that little thing in the corner which says that you know that was the most ideal uh, for that type of bait um, and what the recommended and by looking at that chart when it was still good is how I was able to come up with um, and perf not necessarily perfect but be able to come up with the best usage of this six combo setup now this also came from one of the um, Bassmaster magazines of how to cover everything um, and you can see as I acquired these or close to them I checked off which ones I still had and which ones I needed and so like for example that was my 7.6 heavy um, 7.1 bait caster 50 pound braid and then these are the items that I would use it for and so as you go through you just kind of have all of your bases covered um, for what to do. And so as I got those, I would check them off. 
Um, these were the current setups when I first started that I already had. Um, again, this is super, super faded, but this kind of talked about the dates. So you had February, March 1st, um, I can't even read it anymore, but this was April, May, May, and this talks about the spawn. So this talks about for the area, like for me, I'm in Northern Arizona, so right around the mid April is when we face our spawn. And so that was good to have that idea. And this talked about um, different water temperatures and what the best techniques were to use depending on the month. Again, it's faded, so it's useless right now, but I could always find it. These were just things I printed and then glued them in. Um, and then with my Bassmaster magazine, I'd read through the, um, the articles and any article that gave me a clue to water temperature, um, what type of method to use, um, what type of structure that I was fishing. I'd read through these articles depending on what issue it was. Um, and I would apply that to this book. Now, what's important to think about this is this was a January article and the water temperature was in the mid forties, but that could be out east somewhere where um, it's super cold and so we may not face mid 40s so january to us we have warmer weather so i may need to turn over to march to get that um that water temperature you know because we've got um well our, it, it wouldn't be march but you know if for them the temperature was 40 degrees in march I may have to go back to January to get that mid 40 degree uh, water temperature just because it's so much warmer here in Arizona. So with each article, um, depending on the month, I would just come out and kind of give some pointers and some tips and what type of structure, what type of tackle, um, what type of tie-ons and stuff like that to to do. And so I would go through the, the book and, and talk about that kind of stuff and then I would take this book with me as you can see I didn't complete it um, but I would look at these types of things okay so you had summer fall winter spring the type of structure what other lake species are there what are they feeding on um, what are the feeding habits for that uh, lake some smaller ponds and stuff may only have one source of food so you can't just go out there and throw big crankbaits and stuff like that and necessarily expect a bite if that's not what's natural so temperature ranges what the water clarity is will determine what color of bait you'll throw time of day um, weather all of those play a factor and so this book had really helped me um, learn and I'm still learning so that's why I would like to eventually redo this book it, it really got screwed up um, I know that there's another thing that I'd like to do a glue in like this that talks about um, how the color of your lures change as they get deeper and go a more away from the sunlight and so that really um, can screw with what you think is one color and you throw it as a red or something um, or a yellow even and as it gets deeper it turns into a red or an orange or something like that because of water clarity so just something to think about um, like I said I get the Bassmaster magazine and I would read those articles and I would take little tidbits and kind of collect them into one spot that way when I'm out on the field and I'm like man I wish I could remember what I needed to throw with this type of weather and clarity and stuff like that I could refer to that and kind of oh okay yeah so let me dig through my tackle box and get that and most of the times it would work because these tips and stuff like that are coming from pro anglers who do the Bassmaster circuits and stuff like that so I just wanted to throw that in there include this at the end of this video and um, I hope that guys that helps you guys out so again like subscribe comment below let me know what you think and uh, I want to I want to teach people. I really want to um, pass on my knowledge to people 
and oh I never thought about that you know type of thing so um, I hope you guys again like this video and let me know what I can do next peace